Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, from here on we will discuss the uh, major components of the tissue engineering triad that is the materials, the cells and the signals required for skin tissue engineering. So, uh, biomaterials that are used for skin tissue engineering uh, can be classified as natural, synthetic and a combination of the two. So, we will discuss each one of them in detail. Natural polymers that are used for skin tissue engineering can be polysaccharide based polymers or protein based polymers. Uh, these are some examples of natural polymers that are used for skin tissue engineering. This is however, not an exhaustive list. So, alginates, chitosan, cellulose, hyaluronic acid, dextran, uh, pululan, carrageenan, uh, conjaglucomenin and isabgol are uh, newer polymers that are being explored for skin tissue engineering. Protein based polymers such as collagen, gelatin, silk fibroin, keratin and elastin are being explored for skin tissue engineering. We will look at each one of them in detail. So, in natural polymers, uh, chitosan is a very popular material used for skin tissue engineering uh, obtained from chitin uh, which is found in uh, the cell wall, fungal cell wall and also the exoskeleton of insects. So, chitosan can be processed into different types of matrices uh, such as films, nanofibers and sponges. So, several uh, studies have been done using chitosan. So, here uh, it shows an in vivo study where chitosan has been shown it is highly biocompatible and has been shown to accelerate wound healing. And also chitosan has helped improve cellular adhesion and proliferation. Collagen is a protein based polymer. Uh, it is the more major portion of the uh, extracellular matrix the ECM. Uh, it collagen also can be processed as nanofibers or 3D printed uh, constructs. So, so, here you can see that uh, using a collagen skin substitute, uh, an acceleration in wound healing has been achieved uh, in both uh, freeze dried skin substitutes and electro spun skin substitutes. Uh, reduced wound contraction and uh, also a presence of hallmark of morphogenesis and cohesion, uh, which is the which shows the formation of the uh, natural skin tissue has been observed. Silk fibroin is another natural polymer. Uh, here it has been uh, processed into nanofibers using electro spinning. Skin, uh, silk fibroin, electro spun silk fibroin uh, has shown improved pore size and interconnectivity. The uh, improved pore size and interconnectivity helps in good cellular inter infiltration and proliferation. Like standalone natural polymers, hybrid of two or more natural polymers have also been used. Uh, such as silk keratin scaffolds. So, here uh, the keratin component which contains RGD sequences helps in improved cellular adhesion and proliferation uh, than compared to having silk fibroin scaffolds alone. Uh, the blended material showed superior properties. Also collagen, pululan, hydrogels have been uh, synthesized. Uh, collagen is usually used to make hard biomaterials. Uh, to make uh, softer biomaterials, it is often blended with other natural polymers uh, to make hydrogel systems. So, pululan is one such example. So, in this hydrogel, they obtained an open porous structure uh, with improved cell viability and also achieved improved wound closure and vascularization. So, uh, methacrylated gelatin and methacrylated hyaluronic acid have been blended both natural polymers. 
Hyaluronic acid is also an ECM component. Uh, gelatin is a natural uh, protein based polymer, but uh, the, both the polymers have their own disadvantages uh, such as hyaluronic acid does not help with cell adhesion and gelatin is poor in its mechanical properties. So, the blend of the two uh, can help us overcome these shortcomings and also um, physical or chemical modification of naturally occurring polymers can help improve their properties. So, here in this example uh, the blend has been uh, processed into a hydrogel and they have embedded adipose derived stem cells into the material for improved vascularization. So, conjaglucomenin keratin. So, here conjaglucomenin uh, is a, a polysaccharized based polymer and keratin is a protein based polymer. So, the two have been blended to form scaffolds. These scaffolds they have done in um, in vivo study where it showed enhanced collagen synthesis and deposition in diabetic wounds and also uh, the scaffolds have been shown to be highly biocompatible. Also other natural polymers have been blended together to, uh, to have superior properties as uh, skin tissue engineered products such as isabgol silk fibroin, collagen fibrin bioprinted constructs or collagen chitosan scaffolds. So, now we look at synthetic polymers which have also been used for skin tissue engineering. Uh, polyurethane PVA that is polyvinyl alcohol, PEG polyethylene glycol, uh, polyhema polyhydroxyethyl methacrylate and PLGA polylactic glycolic acid and polycaprolactone. Polyurethane is a very popular synthetic polymer used for skin tissue engineering. Uh, several commercially available wound dressings are there which are uh, made from polyurethane. So, this is an example of a polyurethane foam. Uh, also, you can load different active agent, bioactive agents into the materials to render uh, better wound healing properties. So, here they have blended, um, they have added silver and asiaticoside uh, into the polyurethane material and tested effect uh, wound closure in a porcine model. So, here uh, the material has shown to be biocompatible as seen as there is no skin irritation and also they have uh, observed faster wound healing in deep dermal wounds. So, PLGA is a copolymer of uh, lactic acid and glycolic acid. So, here in this example they have uh, synthesized nanoparticles and uh, they have loaded curcumin a bioactive agent. So, they have observed reduced inflammation, increased re-epithelialization and increased collagen deposition which are improve, uh, which are very important for wound healing. Polycaprolactone uh, is uh, another polymer. Uh, here they have uh, synthesized them as nanofibers using electro spinning. So, they have been embedded with placental derived bioactive molecules for wound healing and uh, polyhema is another synthetic polymer. They have synthesized it as a hydrogel loaded with moxifloxacin and they have uh, seen uh, antioxidant activity and absence of inflammation. Also like natural polymers two or more synthetic polymers have been blended to achieve better properties. So, such as PCL and PEG block copolymer that has been synthesized and electrospun. So, here there are you can see the free amino groups uh, to which they have attached epidermal growth factor and they have done in vivo studies uh, to show improved wound healing uh, with epidermal growth factor loading. Also, there have been other uh, synthetic polymers, polymer hybrids, PCL and PVA, uh, curcumin loaded PCL and PVA uh, nanofibers that showed 
uh, improved wound healing. PEG and PLGA hydrogel, uh, this was a thermo synthesized as a thermosensitive hydrogel uh, or environmentally responsive hydrogel. Uh, this showed enhanced engraftment of muscle derived stem cells that were seeded onto the grafts. So, the combination of uh, natural and synthetic polymers uh, gives the uh, best, gives better uh, properties for skin tissue engineering. Uh, natural polymers uh, can provide biocompatibility uh, to the graft, while synthetic polymers can provide the required mechanical strength. And also uh, the natural polymers help with cell attachment and adhesion and proliferation. So, PVA CMC that is a blend of polyvinyl alcohol and carboxymethyl cellulose, uh, which is a carboxymethyl derivative of cellulose. Uh, here PVA is the synthetic component and CMC is the natural polymer. So, PVA provides the mechanical properties to the material. Uh, PVA is however, highly hydrophilic and it does not help with cell adhesion. So, carboxymethyl cellulose uh, can help with cellular attachment and proliferation. So, the blend has been synthesized as a hydrogel and uh, in this particular study, they have loaded reduced graphene oxide into the material and have found enhanced angiogenesis, which is crucial for wound healing. Uh, silk fibroin PVA uh, blend has also been used. Silk fibroin here is the natural component and PVA being the synthetic component. So, this has been fabricated as nanofibers. So, here you can see the uh, a silk fibroin based mat. It helps with cell recruitment and also they have done in vivo studies to show improved wound healing and remodeling of the extracellular matrix. Uh, these are other uh, combination of synthetic and natural polymers, PCL and collagen nanofibers. So, here they have loaded uh, insulin delivering chitosan nanoparticles, uh, which showed excellent in vivo wound healing. And also, uh, more than two components can be blended together to form uh, uh, tissue engineer, skin tissue engineering materials. PVA starch chitosan has been used here to form a hydrogel and incorporated with uh, nano zinc oxide to show excellent antibacterial activity and wound healing. So, skin substitutes uh, can be classified as acellular and cellular matrices. Uh, the cellular matrices have cells loaded onto the graft. So, there are certain advantages to that. The cultured cells can deliver growth factors and ECM to the wounds and also it has been shown that the cellular skin substitutes can uh, show enhanced angiogenesis. So, what is the source of the cells that are used for uh, seeding? So, they can be autologous, allogenic or xenogenic in uh, as discussed previously or they can they can be differentiated or stem cells. So, different cell types are used in skin grafts. They can be skin derived seed cells such as keratinocytes which majorly occupy the epidermal layer, the dermal fibroblasts which lie in the dermis, the epidermal stem cells and the melanocytes which provide pigment to the skin. Non-cutaneous cells such as uh, embryonic stem cells, uh, IPSCs that is induced pluripotent stem cells, mesenchymal stem, stem cells and uh, cells derived from the amnion have also been used. So, this is an uh, image of keratinocytes cultured on electrospun chitosan nanofibers. Also, uh, the seeding of cells can be done as a co-culture of two different type of cells. Fibroblasts and keratinocytes for example, have been co-cultured and uh, it has been observed that 
uh, by co-culturing them together, the fibroblast can actually help the proliferation of keratinocytes. Also, melanocytes have been co-cultured with fibroblasts and keratinocytes. This can help recreate the natural pigmentation process. Langeran cells have also been uh, co-cultured with fibroblasts and keratinocytes. So, this can help monitor skin immunological reactions. And uh, dermal fibroblasts have also been co-cultured with endothelial cells. So, this can promote vascularization. Now, we are going to look at the third component of the tissue engineering triad, uh, which are the signals. So, uh, these signals can be biochemical or biophysical in nature. Uh, these signals provide functional and instructive matrix uh, to allow skin regeneration. Uh, these signals can regulate cell matrix interactions, cell behavior and function. So, we can develop instructive materials uh, rather than having passive grafts. Uh, these instructive materials can harness the body's innate ability to self repair. So, uh, these are the different uh, signals that can be uh, given to the graft. So, some of these are biochemical signals uh, that are uh, growth factors and derivatives, uh, the ECM proteins, uh, small molecules, uh, genetic regulators and on the right you can see the biophysical signals uh, such as the topography of the matrix, uh, application of negative pressure, uh, electric or electromagnetic stimulation. So, first we will look at biochemical signals. Uh, biochemical signals can be growth factors. Uh, growth factors are potent regular regulators of cellular activities uh, such as cellular migration and proliferation and differentiation. Uh, some growth factors that have been looked at for uh, application in wound healing are uh, vascular endothelial growth factor and epidermal growth factor and uh, basic fibroblast growth factor and transforming growth factor beta. So, these uh, play a part in potent role in all three phases of wound healing. So, conventionally uh, these growth factors were developed, uh, I mean were delivered using conventional approaches. Uh, these conventional delivery methods however, cause burst release of the molecules. Uh, so, we are developing uh, new techniques to deliver these molecules, uh, which can uh, release the factors in a sustained manner and also uh, so that they can be effective at a lower dosage. So, uh, one such example can be attaching the growth factors to ECM proteins. Other than growth factors, uh, their derivatives and uh, certain peptide sequences and uh, the best characterized peptide sequence is the RGD sequence uh, consisting of the amino acids arginine, glycine and aspartic acid. So, uh, this sequence is found in uh, several ECM proteins and also uh, these can be incorporated into synthetic materials which usually lack cell adhesion sites. Uh, this can help in uh, cellular adhesion and migration into the graft. So, other molecules such small bioactive molecules can also be incorporated into the graft. So, one such molecule is oxygen. Uh, oxygen levels uh, have been found to be low in chronic wound tissues. Uh, oxygen level is uh, considered important because it provides energy for bacterial defense, uh, for cell proliferation and also for cell migration, uh, it is crucial. Oxygen has been used in uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, where it is delivered through systemic circulation. However, it fails to reach the desired site. So, then uh, they uh, started using oxygen as a topical therapy. Now, they have come up with uh, oxygen delivering wound dressings such as oxyzyme, uh, which releases oxygen through a chemical reaction. Another bioactive molecule that can be incorporated into tissue engineered grafts is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is uh, uh, synthesized from nitric oxide synthase. Uh, this enzyme is present in three isoforms and all three isoforms have been found in the skin. Uh, in skin cells such as dermal fibroblasts, keratinocytes. So, uh, this enzyme is present in three isoforms and uh, two of the isoforms are constitutively expressed and another one is expressed by inducible expression. Uh, it is involved in various uh, stages of uh, wound healing, especially angiogenesis. Uh, this enzyme is uh, very important for VEGF activity. 
Uh, various genetic regulators have also been incorporated into tissue engineered grafts uh, such as cDNA, small interfering RNA and micro RNA. Uh, cDNA can be uh, delivered using various non-viral vectors such as uh, cationic polymers or liposomes or naked plasmids can be used. Uh, cDNA encoding uh, various peptides and growth factors uh, have been incorporated. Uh, one such uh, protein is the sonic hedgehog protein. Uh, a study showed that uh, the sonic hedgehog gene vector has been shown to uh, improve diabetic wound healing with microvascular remodeling. Several small, in small interfering RNA have been used. So, a small interfering RNA can uh, cause silencing of disease causing genes by binding to the com uh, complementary sequences of the target mRNA. So, uh, several uh, diseases such as uh, skin fibrosis uh, have been treated uh, using uh, small interfering RNA. Uh, another set of gene regulators are microRNA. These are endogenously found repressors uh, that bind to the 3 prime untranslated uh, regions of the mRNA. These microRNA have also been used to regulate angiogenesis and also involved in re-epithelialization and tissue remodeling. Now, we will look at biophysical signals. Uh, one such is the topography of the matrix. Uh, the topography of the matrix can guide cell migration through the graft. So, this can be achieved by using micro patterned surfaces. So, uh, here you can see uh, there is a PDMS membrane uh, which has microfabricated grooves on it. So, which has been synthesized using a mould and human dermal fibroblasts have been cultured on the membrane and uh, mechanical wounding is done on the uh, surface and you place your uh, patch on the membrane and observe the cellular ingrowth. So, here you can see a video. So, in this video you can observe the difference in cellular dynamics between graphs that have perpendicular gratings and other graphs, blank graphs that do not. So, here at 12 hours there is considerable uh, uh, in growth of cells into the graft where the perpendicular gratings are present while in the blank graft even after uh, 24 hours of uh, wounding uh, the uh, graft shows lower confluence compared to the one which has the gratings. Another biophysical signal that has been used is the application of negative pressure. So, this helps in uh, uh, increase in blood flow to the area and also helps in promotion of angiogenesis and granulation tissue formation. Uh, the mechanism that has been proposed here is uh, when you apply the negative pressure there is a slight deformation of the ECM which generates micro strain on the cells. This helps in uh, cellular migration and proliferation. So, uh, several vacuum assisted uh, closure devices have been commercially uh, made available. So, these devices uh, mainly uh, vary in their uh, uh, filler material that is used. So, either foam or uh, antimicrobial gauze dressings have been used and they also vary in the uh, suction catheters that have been used. They also vary in the intensity of the negative pressure that has been applied. So, which varies from 50 to 125 millimeters of mercury. So, in this figure you can see that on application of negative uh, pressure there is exudent removal. Uh, edema reduction and blood supply increase that has been shown. Another biophysical signal used is electric stimulation. Uh, so, this is a biomimicry tool that has been used. It, it, it mimics the endogenous electric fields that arise after wounding and cause keratinocyte migration. And uh, Procellera is one such bioelectric dressing. It produces electric currents uh, similar to the physiological uh, electric fields present in the body. It produces micro uh, currents of the uh, range of 2 to 10 micro amperes. Electromagnetic therapy has also been used as a biophysical signal. Uh, it resulted in upregulation of multiple growth factors and uh, including nitric oxide which is uh, very important for angiogenesis and also uh, this therapy has also been shown to regulate cellular migration. 
Uh, in the next few lectures, we will look at uh, different fabrication techniques that have been used to synthesize tissue engineered skin graft. So, as Vasudha discussed about the design and uh, other uh, characteristics for the for making skin graft that can be cumulatively made into three uh, categories. The first one is uh, freeze drying and the second one is electro spinning and the third one is uh, injectable hydrogel. So, in freeze drying what they do is they make the polymer solution and they will keep it in the frozen condition uh, based on the uh, <laughs> melting temperature of that uh, solvent it will uh, get frozen and it will form the crystals. So, based on whatever temperature we keep it that crystal size will be formed and uh, based on that that pores will be formed into that scaffold. So, uh, in electro spinning uh, they will be passing that uh, polymer solution under the electric field. So, when it is spinned and that will be collected into that substrate. So, the fibers whatever is collected that will be forming a mesh like thing and that can also be used as a skin graft. So, in the injectable gel uh, in outside of the physiological environment that will be in the salt form when it is injected into that uh, physiological environment that will form the gel. So, uh, the advantage is with the injectable gel over that uh, free dried scaffolds and uh, electro spinning waste scaffolds are like uh, that automatically fills that uh, wound bed we do not need any specific uh, mold or something and we do not need any other pre-processing. So, what we need is we just need the polymer or with or without cells and that can be directly put into or uh, injected into that place wherever that wound is and that will fill that wound and uh, it will form the gel. So, that wound bed will be completely covered. So, another uh, advanced technique which is involved with uh, uh, making skin graft is 3D printing. So, in 3D printing it involves uh, various steps. So, first what we need is we will be uh, scanning that uh, particular uh, tissue. So, if we take uh, skin, so that skin will be imaged under uh, CT scan or MRI scan. So, CT scan involves uh, x-ray and uh, it, that image will be taken at uh, all the 360 degree angle. In MRI under the magnetic resonance field, uh, under 360 degree the image will be taken. Once that image is taken that will be converted into uh, printable form like CAD, CAD format. So, because then only we will be able to print that uh, particular structure whatever we are interested in. Then the next step is material selection. So, in the material selection whatever criteria Vasudha discussed we all need to uh, go through all those things and we need to decide what material we need and for what purpose we need. So, all these things need to be decided. Then in case of cell selection we have uh, uh, epidermis that epidermis contains keratinocytes and uh, dermis contain fibroblast. So, uh, apart from that we also can uh, go for some stem cells as uh, she discussed. So, like uh, based on our interest we need to choose keratinocytes or fibroblast or together keratinocyte and fibroblast. It is up to us like uh, what we are uh, going to make. If you want to make only uh, epidermal graft then we need to choose only keratinocytes. If you want to make uh, dermal graft we need to choose only fibroblast or like if you want to make that uh, skin to be in that particular color we also need to choose melanocytes and that needs to be co cultured with the keratinocytes. So, it is all up to us that what we are going to make. Then the next step is bioprinting. So, bioprinting can be of uh, uh, can be printed three ways like we can use inject printer or like we can go for uh, micro extrusion based printer or like uh, laser printing. So, uh, we have already discussed about uh, the 3D printing techniques and uh, how all these things works. So, we do not need to go in detail about those things. So, uh, like uh, we uh, as we know that uh, the hydrogels whatever uh, we are going to make uh, that hydrogel should need to be biocompatible. Only that biocompatibility and gelling nature will not help to use for the biofabrication. So, there are uh, certain criteria that needs to be considered. So, uh, consider like uh, uh, that forms gel, but uh, when you apply some stress or something the cells will not be viable. Then it is it is not of no use. Uh, like when we print it is making gel then also it will not be useful. So, uh, the 
printing fidelity and the speed when that gel gelation occurs all these things play a very important role so all these things are mainly controlled by two main parameters one is viscosity or uh, the rheology of the uh, polymer whatever we use for uh, biofabrication and the second thing is cross linking mechanism so in viscosity what happens is like uh, viscosity mainly uh, mainly uh, played by two parameters first one is concentration of the polymer and the second one is molecular weight of the polymer these are the two parameters decides the viscosity of the any polymer solution so uh, if we take a uh, high viscous polymer with uh, low molecular weight what happens that uh, nozzle will not be able to print that particular thing so if we use that micro extrusion based technique so we use the uh, needle and that uh, over that needle will be uh, applying that pressure into that uh, needle so while we apply the pressure that will be pushing that needle and uh, that will be printing if that solution is highly viscous what happens instead of uh, making a, a, a solution it will form the droplet so to avoid that what we can go for is we can mix it with some other polymer or we can use less concentration of polymer with high molecular weight so we can go for this way or that way so uh, in the left side we see one uh, fine example so in the example what they have done was in the first image a so they used uh, gelatin methacrylate which is a known polymer so th when they used only that gelatin methacrylate it was not able to print whereas it formed the droplet but when they mixed that with the hyaluronic acid what happens it formed the clear uh, solution and once that uh, solution is formed they were able to get the structure of their interest so uh, viscosity plays a very important role in uh, uh, controlling this so uh, another thing is that uh, shear stress so in the shear stress uh, like uh, if we apply more shear to the polymer solution obviously the cells will get dyed so uh, there are reports that even if we apply one pascal of uh, shear into that uh, hydrogel containing cells the endothelial cells get detached from the substrate so uh, like uh, consider even one pascal of pressure is applied that cells are getting deta detached it means when we apply that uh, shear into that uh, needle or uh, whatever printing technique we use the cells will not survive so we get we will get this hydrogel and we will get the resolution of our interest but the cells will not survive in that case there is no point of doing uh, 3d printing so uh, in the same one pascal of uh, shear uh, shear stress like uh, they have also found that uh, cartilage function is also lost so to avoid that what we can do is we can uh, increase the speed of the printing and reduce the shear stress say for example we we have the needle and that needle we are applying some pressure into it so the time of applying that pressure will be less and the printing speed will be faster so the shear whatever is given into that uh, particular polymer solution will become reduced so the number of cells what we get will be more and the, uh, that will be viable so that is the ultimate uh, idea in this and the <coughs> next uh, property with uh, shear stress is that uh, shear thinning so in the shear thinning what happens is uh, in the uh, when that is uh, when the polymer solution is in the needle or uh, uh, particular dispenser so that will be in one structure and when we apply some uh, shear into it that thinning shear thinning will happen and the structure will be reformed or uh, reorganized that we will be able to see in the second uh, part of that image then once it is printed that forms particular hydrogel or the structure of our interest so again that reformed into that shape whatever uh, we are interested in so if we apply more shear into that uh, particular thing that reorganization will be a difficult thing so we will not be able to achieve that uh, reorganized uh, polymer structure in the substrate so if we are not able to achieve that uh, reorganized structure the gelation and other things also will get very so these are the main parameters we need to discuss or we need to know whenever uh, we are going for uh, 3d bioprinting based uh, graph development then the next step is that gelation that as we all know that uh, gelation can be of uh, physical and chemical so in physical we can use some uh, ionic cross linkers or uh, that could be of uh, electrostatic based interaction or we may pass even uv or something and we get uh, 
<laughs> gelation uh, hydrogels and chemicals like we can also use some cross linkers because of that cross linkers that forms uh, gel so uh, these are the main parameters we should know before going for uh, bioprinting so uh, in case of uh, 3d bioprinted construct so uh, we uh, as we discussed in the design criteria we need to have the scaffolds so that graft can be of uh, acellular and uh, cellular so if we want to make uh, acellular based uh, scaffold or uh, graft what we need is we just need only polymer and that structure whatever we need to print that will be printed if it is of uh, cell based uh, therapy then along with the scaffold or hydrogel we need to culture the keratinocytes and fibroblasts or uh, only keratinocytes or only fibroblasts according to our interest and they they will be grown in vitro and uh, once they mature they will be placed into that patient body and that will be used as a regenerated skin, uh, skin. so so far with uh, various techniques they were able to achieve that uh, particular thickness so laser based technique uh, they were able to achieve 600 micron around uh, thickness of the skin so in case of micro wall based uh, thing they achieved about 150 micron uh, and like uh, they have used various materials uh, like uh, collagen hy hyaluronic acid chitosan and various type of uh, biopolymers especially uh, they are all uh, water soluble polymers so far uh, very limited papers are available with uh, hydrophobic polymers and that to be used for uh, skin graft applications so uh, <coughs> so far uh, with the design and uh, <coughs> design criteria and other things they have developed some uh, commercial products so uh, here in we are not just going to discuss about the skin graft based products even like if there is a wound they'll be doing some dressings so even uh, that also will be going we are going to discuss here so the first one is uh, that hydrocolloidal dressing so that will promote that uh, uh, debridement so in the debridement uh, one of the finest product from that is comfil so that was developed by colopost uh, denmark company so what it does is that will promote uh, debridement and it will avoid that moisture to go outside then the next is second thing is alginate dressing so that dressing is made of uh, alginate material and again this also will give uh, this will act as a absorbent and uh, one fine product from that alginate dressing is soft sand that was developed by mesk uh, uh, denmark based company so the next uh, product is non alginate dressings so in the non alginate dressings we have uh, nu gel nu gel developed by uh, johnson and johnson so this will again provide that uh, uh, promote de debridement and uh, it also gives that absorption to the wound site so uh, now that nu gel comes with uh, alginate also just to promote that uh, hydrophilic nature and absorption so we have uh, semi permeable films so here we have bio inclusive developed by johnson and johnson so here in uh, we have uh, polyurethane film so that polyurethane film is uh, coated with acrylic adhesive so what it does is when we place into the wound that will automatically adhere into that uh, wound site and uh, it will pass that uh, air to pass and that will be keep maintaining that uh, moisture condition so if it is dried it will be difficult for that wound to heal so to maintain that they use uh, semi permeable uh, films so they have uh, foam dressings also as we all know that foams mainly made of uh, that polyurethanes so this is uh, just to protect from the thermal environment so uh, from various temperature it can be protected so that is made of that polyurethane so we have antimicrobial dressings so as we as that name indicates that dressing is to avoid that infection uh, whatever um, uh, microorganism invading into that body that can be avoided by these type of dressings so acticoat is uh, developed by smith and nephew healthcare and that is one of the product which is available so these are all uh, the products which ever is available for uh, simply wound dressing not for the graft so uh, when we come to the graft as we told like uh, the graft can be of uh, split thickness uh, graft or uh, full thickness graft so split thickness graft even that could be of uh, dermal graft or epidermal graft so uh, full thickness graft it will have epidermis as well as dermis 
So, uh, the grafts can be of acellular as well as cellular. So, all these things people have developed and uh, they have the products. So, epidermal grafts they are mostly of uh, cell based uh, grafts. So, few people use uh, some, some scaffolds whereas, few does not. So, epicell, is, epicell and cell spray they are uh, simply cell based uh, things. What they do is they only supply the cells into the wound and they will start growing. So, the my skin and uh, laser skin they have the scaffolds. So, here they use collagen and uh, alginate based uh, thing and uh, dermal uh, substitute. Uh, so, this is here in uh, that one of the successful product uh, which is uh, Integra developed by that John Brook. So, we will be discussing about that how that works. So, apart from that aloderm, uh, hylomatrix uh, made of hyaluronic acid, dermograft, uh, transit and uh, hylograft uh, all these products are available. In case of uh, full, uh, full thickness graft, we have R cell, apligraft and uh, polyactive. So, the companies whichever is developed uh, also it is given. So, uh, as I told Integra is one of the finest and uh, successful products in the market. So, that develops only that uh, dermis part. So, that involves dermis development by the scaffold and uh, epidermis development by the uh, autologous uh, skin. So, uh, at the first, uh, first day consider this is uh, the wound. So, what they do is they clean that uh, debris whatever is present at the wound site. Then uh, they will uh, cut that uh, portion wherever that wound extended. So, once everything is done they will be placing that uh, graft. So, that graft contains that uh, collagen and uh, uh, hyaluronic acid as a bed and over there we have the silicon layer. So, uh, after 7th day that new dermis will be formed. So, once that new dermis is formed they will remove that uh, silicon layer whatever is present on the top. So, silicon layer is in general it is given just to avoid that contraction and uh, to avoid that uh, moisture to go outside of the uh, wound bed. So, once that silicon is removed they will take that uh, uh, autograft by uh, dermatome or any other technique they will uh, just cut that uh, tissue from the wound patient and they will place it over that uh, dermis. So, after uh, 25 or uh, 56 day we get the regenerated skin. This is how this uh, Integra works. So, uh, like uh, so far we discussed about that uh, uh, skin graft uh, design and uh, why it is required and uh, what all the techniques involved in uh, developing such skin graft. So, so far uh, there are uh, so much of uh, study has been done and uh, they have tackled so much of problem. Still there are uh, pro some problem exist. So, the main problem is cost. So, uh, if we consider that cost in US dollar, so uh, 50,000 US dollar is uh, needed just to cover that 40 percent of the wound for a male, male patient. So, this is uh, uh, highly costlier. So, to avoid that we need to go for uh, some uh, uh, easy strategy to make uh, some skin graft. Then uh, obviously, that fabrication techniques also a very limiting uh, factor. So, even 3D printing is not an exception. So, in 3D printing resolution and other things play and play and role. So, uh, this needs to be <coughs> optimized so that we will be getting the proper uh, skin graft. Then the next is uh, number of cells. So, as she discussed like uh, the choosing of cells and uh, number of cells whatever uh, we are uh, going to encapsulate into that hydrogel that matters. Because if we seed very less number of cells that will not uh, proliferate and that will not do the function of our interest whatever we are interested in. So, uh, if even we should not take uh, higher the number, even if we take higher the number then uh, unnecessary fibrillation and other things will happen because of that, uh, that wound will get spoiled. So, uh, uh, appropriate number of cells need to be choosed and uh, that also another uh, limiting factor. So, uh, as I told uh, that in the anatomy section like uh, vascularization plays an important role because, because of that vascularization only the cells are growing into the top direction say uh, in the epidermis uh, uh, from uh, epithelial cells to keratinocytes and further uh, the next to next layer and finally, the cells are uh, getting dyed and uh, 
they form the shed of the cells. So, uh, if that uh, proper vascularization is not there, the signals or nutrients will not pass into one layer to other layer. So, that uh, achieving that vas uh, achieving vascularization also is happening by applying uh, negative pressure and some electric field as we discussed in the previous session. But still, uh, it plays a very uh, ro uh, limiting role in uh, vascularization part. So, uh, innervation is another uh, important factor we need to consider, uh, not just for uh, skin, with all the grafts uh, we have this problem. So, this also uh, another limiting factor for this uh, skin. So, once that uh, successful skin graft is developed, we can use it for wound healing. So, that could be of uh, that wound happened because of accident or burns or something or that could happen by diabetic wound or something. So, also it can be used for uh, screening various uh, uh, drugs that could be used for uh, various uh, cosmetic applications. Thank you.